One of the most rewarding aspects of life is developing new skills. Whether you want to pursue a fun hobby, upgrade your work skills, or perhaps change careers entirely, learning something new can be both challenging and fulfilling. Now, of course, success is never guaranteed. Many people end up giving up on their goals due to unforeseen challenges or setbacks. But fortunately, learning is a skill like any other. And by adopting best practices and avoiding common mistakes, we can improve our ability to learn new skills. So today, we're going to cover seven powerful tips for learning a new skill quickly and effectively. Let's begin with tip number one. Narrow the scope to accelerate progress. The first priority is getting clear on exactly what you plan to learn. For example, if you're planning to learn a new language, can you get away with simply learning to speak the language? Is reading and writing something that you can learn later, after you master learning how to speak? A very common mistake is trying to take on too much all at once in the name of efficiency. In the case of learning a new language, it's considerably more difficult to learn how to speak, read, and write all at the same time. It might only seem like a minor increase in effort, but that added complexity can ultimately kill your momentum and make it much more likely that you will end up quitting. So regardless of what it is that you want to learn, look for opportunities to narrow the scope. That way, it's easier to build momentum and eventually achieve success. Of course, later, after you've achieved your initial goal, it's much easier to add on related skills. So for example, once you've learned to speak a new language, it's that much easier to learn how to read and write that new language, whereas it's much more difficult to do all of these things at the same time. Let's continue on to tip number two. Prioritize direct experience early and often. A critical aspect of skill development is gaining practical experience in the situation or context that you plan to apply the new skill. If you want to learn to code mobile apps, find a way to start working on simple apps as early as possible. If you're going to learn a new sport like basketball, join a pickup game sooner rather than later. And if you want to learn to speak a new language, look for opportunities to engage in basic conversations with a native speaker. This direct approach is in stark contrast to the way that many things are taught today. Much of what people learn is abstracted away from the real world, and many skills are taught in simplified, isolated environments. As ultra-learning author Scott H. Young explains, directly learning the thing we want feels too uncomfortable, boring, or frustrating. So we settle for some book, lecture, or app, hoping it will eventually make us better at the real thing. Unfortunately, this approach fails to address one of the most significant challenges in personal development, which is the problem of transfer. Transfer is what happens when you develop a skill in one context, such as shooting a basketball in a driveway, and then you apply it in another context, such as playing in a real game. The problem is that experience in one context often fails to transfer well into another. It's one thing for a basketball player to make shot after shot in a familiar, controlled environment. And yet, it's another thing entirely to make a similar shot in a new environment in the face of a strong defender after receiving an awkward pass and being tired from running up and down the court. A great way to avoid the problem of transfer is to participate in the goal activity as early and as often as possible. Rather than focusing exclusively on isolated skill building, look for opportunities to get in the game on a regular basis. This kind of direct experience makes it easier to identify skills worth practicing, and it provides you with an environment to apply those skills as they're being refined. Now, of course, this may not be an option for every pursuit. Some activities will be too difficult, complex, or dangerous to dive right into. However, the ultimate goal should be to close this gap as quickly as possible. That way, you can gain real-world experience in applying what it is that you've been learning and avoid the trap of getting stuck in focusing entirely on isolated practice. Let's continue on to tip number three. Address weaknesses through focused practice. As you gain direct experience, you will inevitably run into challenges, 
or setbacks that you cannot overcome with your current abilities. For example, when learning a new language, you might start by using flashcards to memorize basic phrases. Then, when conversing with a native speaker to gain direct experience, you may discover that some of the phrases are not commonly used. Furthermore, you may discover several new phrases that you aren't yet familiar with, and while this can be frustrating in the moment, it provides a clear direction in which you can make further progress. Your next practice session might involve removing uncommon words from your flashcards and then adding in new phrases that you anticipate will be relevant the next time you have a conversation with a native speaker. Scott H. Young calls this the direct then drill approach. Direct experience helps you identify weaknesses or areas for improvement. And then once you've identified those weaknesses, you can drill related skills and knowledge to improve your abilities. Of course, at every step along the way, it's very important that we return to the goal activity. That way, we can apply the latest things that we've been working on and get a refined sense of how to continue improving. This direct then drill approach can be used for almost any pursuit, such as starting a business, writing a book, or even learning an instrument. In each case, everything begins by identifying the most direct opportunity to engage in the goal activity. Then, as challenges or setbacks arise, you can engage in purposeful practice to improve the skills and the abilities needed to take your skill to the next level. Let's continue on to tip number four. Seek out qualified, actionable feedback. Regardless of what it is that you're aiming to learn, feedback plays a critical role. It can make all the difference in catching mistakes early, adopting best practices, and avoiding stalled progress. Therefore, it's essential that you create situations where your progress can be routinely observed by a qualified teacher, mentor, or coach. The very best feedback is that which addresses current mistakes and guides future action. This kind of feedback should detail exactly what you are doing wrong and how to fix it. Beyond simple corrective feedback, another powerful resource is what Scott H. Young refers to as meta-feedback. As he explains, this kind of feedback isn't about your performance, but about evaluating the overall success of the strategy you're using to learn. In other words, rather than addressing specific mistakes that you are making, this kind of feedback addresses the overall approach that you are using. So for example, in the case of learning a new language with a mobile app, it may be superior for you to instead use flashcards. Now, there are situations where it may be impossible for you to find a qualified teacher or mentor, but in such situations, it can still be very beneficial to seek outside feedback even from non-experts. And that's because, as a general rule, it's much easier for an outside observer to assess what it is that we are doing as opposed to us trying to monitor in real time our own performance. Now, with that said, when outside observers offer up suggestions for how to correct mistakes, we should take this information with a grain of salt. And that's because it's much easier for non-experts to identify mistakes than it is for them to necessarily come up with solutions or fixes for those mistakes. Let's continue on to tip number five. Build on the experience of top performers. Some pursuits can and should be more structured than others. For example, if you're looking to play the piano at an expert level, there are real advantages to learning specific techniques and concepts in a certain order. And the same is true of many pursuits, such as playing professional sports, mastering games like chess, and even preparing for Olympic-level competitions. In such cases, time has allowed for learning methods to be refined over multiple generations. Experienced coaches can then help students build on what has worked in the past, avoid common mistakes, and take their skills to the next level. This is one reason why experts in many domains continually outperform the previous generation. 
Of course, it's worth noting there are pursuits that lack this kind of history or structure. But in those situations, it can still be beneficial to study top performers to better understand what they did to become successful. For example, you can study their life experience, their related hobbies, and other factors that ultimately helped contribute to their overall success. And in doing so, you can develop training methods for reproducing their results. Let's continue on to tip number six. Understand the fundamentals deeply. It's often critical to adopt best practices and standard procedures when first developing a new skill. However, as you begin to progress, it's very important to dig beneath these shortcuts to better understand how and why things work the way that they do. Consider the difference between memorizing directions to several restaurants in a new city versus truly understanding the lay of the land. When someone has deep knowledge about a city, they don't have to memorize turn-by-turn -turn directions for every new destination. Instead, they can simply associate it with a nearby landmark and add it to their mental map. Likewise, when we understand something on a deep level, we can apply the knowledge to more situations and recall details with greater accuracy and learn related concepts much faster. Now, again, to be clear, it's very beneficial to begin with best practices when first learning a new skill because this can really accelerate our progress. However, as we advance and as we have more time to learn, it's important to dig deeper and understand how things really work and why those best practices and procedures were established in the first place. Not only can this approach help you identify when a process is flawed or outdated, but it can also help you understand when it makes sense to break with the rules and improvise to create better results. When in doubt, ask yourself questions like, why are things done that way? Is that still the best approach? What else might work better? Let's continue on with tip number seven. Rely on habits instead of willpower. No sudden surge in inspiration or motivation can compete with the progress that is made through consistent action over an extended period of time. To quote author James Clear, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. Thus, if we are serious about advancing a skill, we must focus on building reliable habits around gaining experience, engaging in practice, and gathering feedback. The goal is to have these essential activities become an automatic part of our routine, like eating, sleeping, or even brushing our teeth. Now, a great strategy for initiating new habits is to anchor them to existing routines. As social scientist BJ Fogg explains, you already have a lot of reliable routines, and each of them can serve as an action prompt for a new habit. For example, you might choose to add a new habit after your morning shower, or after you return home from work, or after cleaning up the dishes in the evening. The right choice will depend on a variety of factors, but one of the most important things to consider is the frequency of the new habit and the anchor routine that you're seeking to connect it to. So for example, if you're trying to start a habit of writing for 25 minutes every day, then you want to link that with an existing habit that already takes place on a daily basis. Of course, it can still take considerable focus and energy to lock in a new habit, but the beauty here is once something becomes an automatic part of your routine, it makes continual progress significantly easier. To learn more about how to establish positive habits or break bad ones, consider reading Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg or Atomic Habits by James Clear. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Click the like and subscribe buttons here on YouTube if you'd like to see more content like this again in the future.